So I will talk about introduction to fluorescent correlation spectroscopy today. And uh, I want to say that, first of all, uh, we use the term Brownian motion to indicate random motion of particles. And Robert Brown was a botanist, and he was interested in proving that uh, everything that is moving is alive. And he did a famous experiment on uh, um, plants on, and to demonstrate that the organelles of the plants the, uh, move in accord to the theory that everything that moves is alive. And then he says, well, uh, on that basis, I declare that I found what is the origin of, of the plants to, in the same thing that spermatozoa are, are the origin of animal life. And uh, uh, they say he gives this talk at the Royal Academy of Science, and there is a record that somebody asked, have you done a control experiment in which we have something which is not for sure uh, mm -hmm. alive and it move or not. And he said, no, but I will do. And then he went back to his place and asked his assistant to do a check using a powder uh, obtained from a, from a crystal, which is not supposed to be alive, and asked, does it move? And the uh, uh, assistant said, yes, it moves. Well, say, uh, also something had to be wrong with the measurement, and they did, did a lot of measurement, and they figured out that actually it would continue to move no matter what. And uh, so we have to, that was in, in 1839, and it took some time for people to understand what is happening there. And uh, many people tried to figure out what is happening about and what will set things in motion. And then it was Albert Einstein in 2005 who explained the, why the particles will move. And he was using a theory of gases in which the particle continues to exchange uh, energy and momentum with the particles surrounding them. And uh, using that principle, he shows that every particle should move, uh, provided it has a mass and, uh, uh, and, and the temperature was okay. And uh, that explanation of uh, um, Albert Einstein uh, was, Albert Einstein never did an experiment, but the explanation was so clear and so simple that everybody say, well, you know, particles will move independently on, on the, if they are alive or not. And, and, and that was the very first explanation of uh, um, the experiment of Robert Brown. But let's go on and see if we can get a, a, another explanation of that and uh, what was done later on. So let me see why. Okay, so uh, today we talk about uh, fluorescence method, and uh, we know that the fluorescent method can change. So the fluorescence can change because you change excitation of emission or an of polarization, which was discussed by Dave. Uh, quenching fluorescent lifetime, resonance, and resonance, fluorescent microscopy. And of course, the things which are typical of fluorescent correlation spectroscopy, which is translation and rotation and diffusion concentration in dynamics. And uh, uh, I want to show an experiment done by uh, Svedberg in 1911, so it was immediately after Einstein the proposed his explanation. And what is happening is that he was observing colloidal gold particle with uh, what he called a super microscope, which is actually a, a microscope in which the light comes horizontal and you observe 90 degrees in, in order to measure the particles. Uh, 
And you, you see, this is the record that was copied from the first page of his paper. And if you see, he says, I see one particle, I see two particles, I see none, 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 and so on. And then he goes in the list and here is stop. And then he realized that he, he was a really, a truly random process. He can stop and start again. And he stopped here, he stopped there, he stopped there. And, and simply because he was tired of, of reading the, the numbers and, and trying to synchronize with measure. And, and that is what is it. Okay. Now I took those, those data from Svedberg and I plotted just with uh, a plotting program. And when I plotted this data, I say, well, this is very strange. And, and probably you can react in the same way. What is strange here is that, for example, there is a, a long period in which there is always one particle. And then if you try to follow and, 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 and look at the frequencies that you have here, uh, you will figure it out that actually there are frequencies. And so, uh, first of all, the system goes up in particle number and then goes down and then goes up and go, go down. And, and see, it's, uh, so, if you count, if you plot the data which are here in, in red, and you plot as a particle number, so how many particle number I see in a given second, you will have a function which is a Poissonian behavior. And he said, he say, well, according to Einstein, it's supposed to be a Poissonian behavior, and they have a Poissonian behavior. And he didn't ever plot the full record. If I plot the full record, probably fluctuation conventional metroscopy would have been uh, set up much higher. Okay, now let us see what fluorescence can, can be observed. As we know, can observe diffusion. So diffusion means that within the volume of excitation, I will call the volume of excitation, the volume that you excite the molecule, you can have diffusion, and diffusion will increase or decrease the number of particles, enzymatic activity, phase fluctuation, as we know uh, today, conformation and dynamics, a rotational motion and protein form. And all those process over there. And this is illustration illustration of what we see. So we will have a volume of observation, which I draw in, in that particular way. Uh, you have particles that are moving, and once in a while a particle can enter into volume of excitation. When the particle enters into volume of excitation, of course, the vol the number of particles increases by one. And uh, let us see, uh, well, I will not discuss about one photon and two photon excitation. In one photon, you need the two pinhole, and in two photon, you don't need any pinhole. And that is the same slide I think that uh, Leonel showed before. Okay, so let us have now a time histogram that I did with my instrument. So the time histogram, this shows that you have no particle, and then oops, suddenly one particle get in and another particle uh, get, get out and so on. So if you look at the time histogram, it's a very, it's a very strange time histogram. So it's not Gaussian at all. Uh, and what you see is that there are peaks one in a while. And for example, there are several peaks which are 40, 50 counts. And so, now we need we need a method to analyze these times uh, sequence. So uh, the time histogram. So we have a, an autocorrelation function which was invented after the experiment was done and after uh, when people start to study the noise in telegraph or telephone lines. And then, other than that, you can plot the peaks that you see here. And the peaks says that uh, once in a while you observe 100,000 or whatever units. And so you have two ways to see the set of data. One is the autocorrelation function, which I will define here in a minute. And the other is the photon counting histogram, which says how many photons 
uh, coming out of the sample at any instant of time. Okay, and uh, now let us see how those things are. So, the autocorrelation function is defined by this equation. So, df is the fluctuation in fluorescence, and df plus tau is the, the fluctuation in fluorescence after a given time, normalized to the total fluorescence intensity. Okay, so df, as I said, is the change in the fluorescence intensity between time team and between one time and the average fluorescence intensity. So what are the factors that will influence the fluorescence intensity? Well, the fluorescence intensity we know will depend on the concentration of molecules that we have, on the illumination volume, which is that WR, K is a factor to simply say tells you how efficient are the filter and Q is the quantum efficiency. So the, major, the larger is the quantum efficiency, the more fluorescence intensity you will observe and the more, tra more transmission you have in the filters, the better it will be. Okay, so, uh, so really we have, we need to know the concentration of the sample the concentration, the illumination volume, and eventually those two parts of what are gone. Okay. So uh, let us see how those things are, are done. So suppose we have a, a given volume, and the given volume can contain a given a number of molecules. So that molecule, that number of molecule with respect to the average, which is drawn here can increase if one molecule will get in and will decrease if one molecule will get out. So now uh, the increase and decrease, increase and decrease is what causes the fluctuation. So we need to figure it out how to uh, calculate the fluctuation from this value. Well, from the, it's very simple because we go uh, negative, then we go positive, we go negative, we go positive and so on. So the, the way to calculate the fluctuation is very simple. And, and from that fluctuation, we can calculate the correlation function, which is the intensity at the time t times the intensity at the, at the later time divided the square root of the intensity. And this is the way we do generally. Okay, so this correlation function has the following property that at zero time, it tends so at zero time, it tends to a value which depends on the inverse of the number of molecules. And I will try to demonstrate that. And second goes to zero at very long time because there is no correlation between the fluctuation at this time and another very long time. So uh, all the fluctuation that we will deal in this part of the talk will start from a value and then will decrease uh, passing through the point uh, uh, here in the middle and will decrease to a volume uh, uh, value. So remember that the definition of the auto correlation function, what, what it is. So let us see if we can figure it out based on the number of molecules that are fluctuating in a given volume, if we can figure it out uh, what is the value uh, corresponding at zero time? So, for example, suppose we have two molecules and one goes in and one goes out, will change by 50%. So, uh, the change in the correlation function here, red, will be given by the fluctuation of one molecule. If we have four and one leaves and the other goes in, we will have only one third of the molecule change, and then that will be decreased. So clearly, if we have 10 molecules and one goes in and one goes out, we will have a value of 10, while one over 10 of 10 molecules. And if we have 100 molecules and one goes in and one over out, goes out, it will, we will have a value of ab about 100, or whatever, we have 100 or 100 of the molecules, that change. So clearly, the G0 is, the, is proportional to the total number of molecules. With the example that I give to you, 
And this example is a generally, um, this is, this is generally true. So a, a Poisson distribution, which describes the occupation of the particle, uh, uh, in a Poissonian distribution, the variance is proportional to the number of particles. So we have the, the particle number is equal to the variance of the cylinder. Okay, so that can be, okay, so the fluctuation in the intensity will be equal to, you have that part, which is df over f the square, and then you have, an, a, which is, this is the average, and, and that a, a correspond to the fluctuation of one part. Okay, so, and, and then the variance, as I showed here, I hope you can see that, uh, is one over n. So uh, what happens is that the variance that you will measure, so would be one over n. And this is the same uh, or thing that comes come directly from the autocorrelation function and has that particular problem. Okay, so up to here, everything uh, it was, was more or less okay. And, and and then let us see how we can work with those numbers. So, so for example, suppose we have very few particles. So we have one and then we have some zero, 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 two, for example, two, one, and so on. So the average of this series, I calculate the average is 0 0.72, and the variance is 0.256. So the number, 0.256 and in the variance, the, the average to the square divided the variance is 0.296. Now suppose that we, we have a different uh, system, which is much more sensitive. So let us increase the brightness of the particle by a factor of four, for example. So that is the same series multiplied by a factor of four. But if we do that, then we calculate the average in 0 0.1, because of course we have main zeros, and the variance is 0 0.4. So if we calculate that, then the average will the ratio. So the average number, which is average to square divided the variance is 0.296. So it doesn't change if you change the intensity of your laser or if you change the, the brightness of the particle you are using. So this is very important because that gives us a, a possibility to measure, for example, a particle in, in, a, in or, or a concentration of a molecule or a virus in the, in the nucleus and so on. So this is a, a, a general consequence of the correlation function, which is independent on the total number that we observe, but the average divided by the variance is constant. Okay, so now let us see what is given by the, the correlation, the point illumination. So the point illumination, the point of illumination uh, is not a volume perfectly defined, but it is a projection x, y, x, uh, x, y, x, y, which are supposed to be the same, and the other is a projection, projection along the axis. And you can see that the projection, the projection is different, and we will deal with that in a moment. But the important thing here is that whatever is the volume of illumination, as you move away, it doesn't change, uh, it doesn't change dramatically, but change with a smooth function. Okay, so uh, let us see, for example, uh, in two photon autocorrelation function, for example, for a two dimensional Gaussian excitation volume. So we have that the G of tau will be equal to gamma that I have not discussed, but proportional to the inverse of the number of molecules, and then a term which depends on the diffusion. So one photon excitation contains number of four here in two photon excitation because it's the square contain a number of i. And notice that the g of tau change as gamma over n and then changes with this fact. If we have 
a two dimension. If we have a three dimensional, so like we have in a cell, for example, uh, we have two of those cells, two minus one. And then uh, every, every Gaussian term will give you a square root of two, a square root term. So we will have in a three dimensional Gaussian volume that the correlation function, so the, the uh, out of relation function is proportional to gamma over n, and then is proportional to how many square root terms we have depending on the proportionality of the, the depending on the dimension that we do the expect. Okay, so let us have think a little bit more more compact as it generally seems. So the in the d Gaussian, so we will have instead of writing tau over tau, which is the time divided the time of diffusion, we will have a, a term which we call a square, which is essentially the ratio between the two. And where n is the total number of particles, tau d is the diffusion time relative to d okay, for two photon or one photon. And this is the shape parameter equivalent to w which is the, which is that value with respect to the other value. Okay, so this is everything that we have here. So uh, in, in this shape parameter, equivalent to W, so is the waste in the W axis divided Z in, in the previous equation. Suppose that the particle disappear because we have a triple set term and they didn't call that the call under the form of uh, um, um, under the form of uh, phosphorescence. So if the particle disappear, well, there will be an extra fluctuation due to the fact that the particle has disappeared and that will depend on the right of disappearance of the particle. Uh, and, and, and this is the, essentially the population of the triple star. So let us, let us work out what happens in terms of diffusion control. For example, if we have a molecule like fluorescein or, or fast moving, uh, the unit of the diffusion is in micrometers square per second. This is because it will move in every possible dimension. Uh, and so, the, the dimension, the, the unit is that the Gaussian will decrease by micrometer square per second. This is for a very fast moving molecule. If you have not a very fast moving molecule, but a medium moving molecule that can be like a GFP, it would be a 90 micrometer square per second. And uh, if you have a, a a double, so a, a two GFP will be 71 micrometers per percent. So you can see that if you have a relatively a high sensitivity, you can measure that to be different on that, to be different on that. And according to the Einstein, Stock Einstein equation, the diffusion constant will depend on the inverse of the radius of the particle. Now, in terms of molecular volume that we generally deal with, the volume will, uh, molecular weight will change with R to the Q as is supposed to be. And in those equations are, are, are to the Q. Okay, now let us, let us look at an experiment, how it's done. So this experiment was done in a HeLa cells were transfected with the, the protein AK1 AG GFP that goes actually AK1 goes in, in the in the member. And you can see here it goes in the member. So those are not with the AK1 and these are with the AK1. So you can see that the membrane is brighter than the rest and that if you make a line here you will get high, low high and low again. And this is what is shown here. So the longer is the time that it takes, you will have EGFP in solution, which 
has a time constant more or less of the 0 0.01 second. Then the EGFP in the cell, the same molecule, but inside the cell, uh, change by about a factor of five in, in diffusion. And then uh, if you have the EGFP with AK, will change further because it's large molecule and so on. So you can see that there are something strange happening. So that GFP in solution move faster. So reach the same correlation function in a shorter period of time than if you have emotion in a cell, inside the cell. Now, until uh, 2000, more than in the year 2000, people say that this is, is due to the diffusion of the molecule. And the diffusion of the molecule comes from this factor that says, well, the, the viscosity is different in the cytoplasm, so you will have a different time. Okay, now th this cannot be true. It cannot be true because we and other demonstrate that the rotational rate of a GFP in solution with the EGFP in a cell is about the same. So clearly, if it was viscosity, it will affect the rotational rate, but does, does not affect the rotational rate. And that affects only the difference between translational diffusion, which is when the molecule translate and the rotational diffusion. So the rotational diffusion shows no change. And, but the, the autocorrelation function shows a change of factor of five. So all those papers that say that this is due to membrane viscosity or internal viscosity of the cytoplasm are clearly wrong because they cannot explain this, this change due to essentially viscosity. And that was done by us and by other and by many other people. Okay. When we cross the membrane, like in this particular case, so we go from that value and we try to measure this value, this value, this value, and then you measure this value. You see that the values here are true values that you obtain for the correlation function. And in fact, you can see the first relaxation, the second relaxation. But when you are in the, in the cytoplasm, you can see only one relaxation time. But those numbers, 16.6, 9.62, are much, much, much different than they will be due to error in the measurement. And, and actually, we will figure out what they are doing. So uh, another thing that is very important is that the species vary by the difference in diffusion cost, OK, by different diffusion cost. And there is, if you have two species of different fractional intensity, the fractional intensity gets the square here. So. If that is the G0 of one species or whatever, the uh, total correlation function that you measure is the sum of the square of the fractional intensity, uh, which was not discussed today in, if you have a system with two components. And so G0 is no, is no longer equal to the one over N because N, is the fractional intensity of the two components. So you have to be very careful when you do this sort of analysis. And by the way, uh, there are commercial software, for example, the one sold by the uh, size, that they forgot to have this, this fact. So they say that the uh, G0 of the sample is simply the sum of G0 of each individual component, which is not true because it will depend on the square of the fractional intensity. Okay, so uh, let, us start, let us study another thing uh, that we uh, will discuss more in detail in later. So uh, we have a antibody which combine, for example, two molecules, and, uh, and the antibody can be of the different kind. Now, uh, if you have uh, the antibody, for example, is IgG, 
and we measure um, bind to fluorescein, you will see that you will get the different values of the autocorrelation code. Uh, and if you try to do a tight dimensional experiment, you will see that the KD is unique for this reaction and it's about 12 point, 12 nanometer, 12 nanometer. So it's clear that the values here change due to other, other uh, reasons. Those are the people at uh, Apple that did the, those experiments. And uh, so let us see how how is made. So first of all, in this example, you can have one binding site, another binding site. So you have two binding sites. And then you can say that it's simply when it's uh, 50% bound, it, the two binding sites are not occupied and so on. So this is a, a, the explanation of this aspect. And, and let us see uh, how that is done. So the KD for the reaction is done in that group, but the KD for one ligand is done by the, the, the other group, and the KD for two ligands is done in the other group. So the sum gives the total KD as it should be, but the amount of one component and the other component needs to be taken into account. So, so let us see if we uh, can get a better uh, understanding of that. So uh, what we measure is counts per second per molecule. So each molecule will give a count per second per molecule. And then we have to decide what is the amplitude. And the other side, what is the correlation function? So the correlation function has the usual behavior and decrease as we increase the antibody, the, the concentration of the antibody. But the amount of correlation that we have here, uh, the amount of correlation has a maximum at a given antibody, which depends on the person, the KD of the reaction. So we have a a problem in the sense that uh, if we analyze the green curve, how can we get from the green curve that there are one or two binding sites? And, and this is very difficult to look at if you look at this curve, that this is due to two binding sites. Okay, so uh, in order to do that in order to figure it out what, how many particles we need to uh, have, we need a different kind of uh, uh, of analysis, which is we need to analyze the number of particles in a given configuration by the method of the photon counting history. So I will I will describe briefly what this method is. Is so first of all. Uh, the, bright, the brightness of the particle, which is count per second per molecule. Uh, so if we compare with the Poisson that fits the best fit of those curves, and we have, for example, fluorescein, which is the triangle, and then we have rhodamine, which is brighter, is the particle, and then we have a different person. And you can see that all, all those curves are different. Now, if you are able to tell me uh, what is the value of the brightness of a particle from the number of the particle, this is very difficult from those, those curves that looks very similar. Okay, so let us see if we can do an experiment in order to figure it out how we can do. So, for example, we have 5.5 nanomolar of fluorescent, and we have this curve, and this is the best possible boson for the curve. If we have 550 nanometer of fluorescent, we have essentially a perfect curve with the boson. And the reason for that is that we have so many particles in the observation volume that essentially the position of the particle doesn't matter very much. And so, uh, this is very, very interesting because that means that uh, you, 
a moment that we have many, many particles will be impossible to tell how many molecules we have. Okay, so, uh, so uh, let, us, let us talk about molecular brightness. And so molecular brightness, we have snap, snapshot for the excitation volume. And we have, for example, one, two, and two particles. And then for the photon counting histogram, we have a, a sample one, fewer but brighter flow four, sample one, sample two, and sample three. So depending on the on the flow of four that we have, we can have different, different apparent different shape. And it's impossible from those shapes to tell how many particles and how bright they are. Okay, so let us do one example that was done because it was easier to do this example than the antibodies. So we have a folate base A2, which was isolated from Cotterus actual spin event. And this is a paper that uh, has been published several years ago. Okay, so uh, S S S phosphorylated uh, SPL2 have a self association at the given frequency. Then membrane binding requires the self association, and this is the binding that we have. So, multi bilayer level, so in level, in, in uh, levels in which we have multi bilayer, uh, we have here. Uh, the phosphorus, the this um, molecule, which is with car, so this is the PPC, so have a choline group and the carbon carbonyl tail group, and it has a very different uh, value for one and the other. So, in solution, let us see what is happening. So, in solution, we have a steady state anisotropy as they show is constant, so that does not dissociate. Fluorescence correlation spectroscopy shows that all the values are here, but it, but we will expect something like curve A or curve V, depending on the values that we have. So the time resolved and isotropy shows that there is no uh, uh, separation of the molecule in, in the, at least in those membranes, but, uh, but the monomer lipid and micellar lipid uh, will change and will change very much depending on the concentration. Hello? Hello? And uh, so, if, uh, so, if we have the PPC, we measure the number of molecules, that we have, we have a very different uh, For example, uh, if you add calcium or not to the sample, you can change uh, the concentration of the uh, uh, This is the drawing uh, 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 or the model that we end up. So we have very high bind. Then we have the PVC, and then they dissociate a very high concentration when it's very high concentration. Okay. So in order to measure how it works, we do a dual kind of detection. We do a channel detection, we split the signal in two parts. And uh, uh, clearly, if the color is the same, we will get the same concentration. Yeah. But uh, what happens here is that the detectors have some noise for themselves. And the detector noise can be removed if we do the cross correlation between the two. And it can be removed because if the uh, noise is in one detector, noise will not be in the other detector exactly at the same time. So the cross correlation always clean up this. And so the cross correlation between the two channels is really to the channel. Okay. Uh, so 
for the three dimensional Gaunian excitation, we can have this expression. And then this expression, if we have particles which are in the particles which are right, we can feel the right. We can use a right field of the other and figuring out only the molecules which are for at the same time. And, uh, and so we can figure it out how molecules have to be. And uh, of course, we have to be careful that the volume of the two colors will be to not do the same. So we have to be careful about the number C. And uh, figure it out how many molecules are there. So, I, we did many other experiments that time with both clay together to figure out the uh, uh, junction. And, and, and that shows that in every case we can distinguish the number of more the more the, the, the more we can have two don't do two colors and one color. Okay. So let us go back now to the analysis of the of the, um, uh, of the of the of the of the of the case of the of the case of the of the case 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 uh, in, in serious. I don't know if you are apart from the mic or something. Well, is it? Is microphone yeah. isn't working? Uh, a little bit bad. And you are I think the time. Is stronger. Okay. And you are also around the time. Yes. Uh, maybe I can stop here and uh, ask uh, for questions. 